energy, enthusiasm, excitement. Woohoo! I call it the three E's energy, enthusiasm, excitement for life. Are you jumping out of bed every morning with the three E's and maintaining them throughout the day so that at three o'clock in the afternoon you are not requiring coffee or Red Bull or some kind of stimulant because you want to have a little snooze, a little nanny nap? So where does energy come from? And that's why I'm outside, because it obviously comes from the sun. If all energy comes from the sun. Uh, and then we eat, which gives us energy. So the sun uh, puts energy into animals, puts energy into plants, fruit, veggies. We eat them and we now have energy. And that's where it all becomes really complicated, doesn't it? <laughs> Food. I'm coming at you today from a very sad heart because I have to deal with every day pretty much People who share with me, when I say have to deal with, it just makes me sad. People who have a really poor relationship with food. People who hate food or hate themselves for loving food or they eat too much food or they don't eat any food or they eat food and they throw it up. They feel guilty about eating food. All the things that I just wish I could take away. I wish I could give in a pretty pink box a healthy relationship with food. Eat what you love. Don't eat what you don't love. Eat when you're hungry, stop eating when you're full and just really appreciate the exciting experience that is that food I think is meant to be. But unfortunately for most people, for most people now, uh, food is not that exciting. So they're either uh, counting every calorie, measuring everything they eat, uh, looking at all the percentages of macronutrients and scared to death that something they eat is going to make them fat or increase their body fat percentage or make them look bad. And then we have the reverse of that, which seems a lot more people, of course, where I just can't be bothered with it all. I'm just going to eat an enormous amount of food or, you know, I'm addicted to food. That seems to be a common one now. Uh, I'm just going to eat whatever I want and people are just getting fatter and fatter and fatter. And that's not, that's, ob that's an observation, of course. But every medical association, health association, government organisation in the world that deals with health will tell us that, Obesity and morbid obesity is just becoming out of control. And this is so politically incorrect and I don't even know how to, how to say it effectively, so I'm just going to share. There are a lot of people now who are talking about being overweight, obese, and even morbidly obese as something that's, that's healthy and normal and we should accept it and it's all okay. And if, that's, if that, that individual person loves the way they look and they have a stack of energy, energy and enthusiasm and excitement for life and they're loving their life and they're healthy, fit and strong, what we weigh and what we look like of course doesn't matter. But is it possible that being morbidly obese, obese, and I use this terminology very carefully, uh, my definition of obesity is where your weight is affecting your health. Now that then wouldn't just include being overweight because I have worked with all of my career path people who don't eat any food so they're massively underweight so their weight is affecting their health or they eat food and throw up so they're and and that's to control their weight so their weight is affecting their health their mental and their physical health but this thing about uh, carrying around enormous amounts of excess weight what does that do to the body and if you've got a, a low resting heart rate, you've got a healthy blood pressure, you've got normal or healthy blood sugar levels and normal or healthy blood fat levels, cholesterol levels, then that's considered to be healthy. And if you have a healthy brain space, so you love what you see in the mirror and you love the way you look and feel every day and you've got a stack of energy all day long, then what we weigh technically doesn't matter. So you can be, can you be morbidly obese and have a healthy resting heart rate, healthy blood pressure, healthy blood sugar levels, healthy blood fat levels and have a healthy brain space? If that's possible, then that's awesome. Who cares how big we are and what we look like? But I wish this for everybody and there's always these four questions that I always ask about whatever eating plan you're on, whatever exercise plan you're on, so whether that's complete inactivity and eating enormous amounts of food or you are consciously aware of everything you put into your body, I always ask these three things, which is my first question, energy, enthusiasm, enthusiasm, ah, enthusiasm, trying to say the word, and excitement for life. Energy, enthusiasm and excitement all day long. Should you be able to demand that from your eating and exercise plan? Why would you want to live your life without enough energy to get through the day? 
So whatever we're doing, shouldn't it be giving us the energy to live our life exactly the way we need to and do all the things that we want to do with energy? So number one is energy. Number two is performance. So there's a big difference between existing through life versus loving your life. And performance, whatever I'm doing, whether I'm a parent, a teacher, an athlete, a musician, uh, whatever you're doing, whatever performance you're in at the moment, whatever you have to, however you are forcing your body to perform, should it be really important that you're eating an exercise plan, gives you everything that you need to be able to perform that way. So do you need to be able to, or do you want to have the energy to exercise, to uh, be a stress-free parent or be a patient parent? to be the CEO of a company and be able to deal with challenges, to be an elite athlete and go and run and jump and kick and punch and do all the things that you want to do, do you need to perform at your best? So number one is energy, number two is performance. Number three, however you want to look, whatever's important to you, when you look in your mirror, should your eating and exercise plan be something that gives you the body that you love to look at and to touch and feel? And they're the... uh, I just think this is so important because so many people share with me every day that they hate their life because they hate their body. They don't like what they see in the mirror. They don't have enough energy. They're not performing at their best and they just want their life to be different. And of course, that comes from being healthy and fit and strong. And that's what exercise professionals are for. And that's what I do every day. I train exercise professionals, but I am an exercise professional and I'm a healthy, fit, strong human being who lives my life in those four areas. I'm healthy, fit and strong and I have a stack of energy. I perform at my best. I love what I see in the mirror and I am getting exactly what I want from my eating and exercise plan, which is all of those things. So if whatever you're doing at the moment isn't giving you those four things, if you're not healthy, if you don't have a healthy headspace about food, if you're eating not enough or you're eating and throwing up or you're eating and feeling guilty or you're eating enormous amounts of food and and you are not loving the way you look and feel, what changes do you need to make? What do you need to do differently? And is it possible that the whole health and fitness eating challenge, the whole controversial arguments that go on every day, why can we just make it simple? And I'll just, this is, this is the Rowey philosophy. This is the anatomy and physiology of the human body. You ready? Eat when you're hungry. Stop eating when you're full. Eat what you love. Don't eat what you don't love. What if we taught that to our kids? I'm not sure we can change adults, but what if our kids grew up with that headspace? What about just be active, get puffed, lift heavy to be strong? And that's the simplicity of being healthy, fit and strong, which is get puffed to be fit, lift heavy to get strong, put in the right amount of energy, which is if I don't have enough energy, I need to eat some food. This whole thing about when to eat, how much to eat, there are all arguments. What if we listen to our own body? And is it possible that if you're fit and if you're strong, all of those systems will work effectively? So I always ask these questions. If your body's healthy and you're thirsty, is that your body telling you that you need to have a drink? If you're healthy and you, and you feel hungry, is that your, your healthy body telling you that you need food? If you're tired, is that your healthy body telling you that you need to get some sleep? This beautiful machine that we call the human body is capable of telling us exactly what it needs personally, not what a guru tells us, not what a social media expert tells us, not what even an exercise professional tells us. And as an exercise professional, I never tell people what to do. I always ask, what do you want? How much energy do you need? Do you want to perform at your best? What do you want to look like? Do you, what results do you want from your eating and exercise plan? And let's design something that you can stick to for the rest of your life. Not me, not some elite athlete, not some supermodel, what can you stick to for the rest of your life so that you can be healthy, fit and strong for the rest of your life? No more dieting, no more crazy exercises, no more roller coastering up and down out of energy into energy, feel good one day, feel crappy the next day. I would love you to love your food, love your exercise and love your life. That's what Romax is all about. Live your life to the max every day. Love all of your food, love all of your exercise. Have a stack of energy all day long. Perform at your best. And most importantly, when you look in your mirror, you have to love what you see. 
and you have to get the results that you want from your eating and exercise plan. So I, I want to stop with this feel guilty, have to count and measure, have to be focused totally on everything that I put into my mouth. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just be healthy, fit and strong and stay that way for the rest of our lives because we love our food and we love our exercise, we're fit and we're strong and we can come outside every day and sing like I do. I feel good, na 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 I knew that I would now because I'm healthy, fit, strong and energetic. Three E's, energy, enthusiasm, and excitement. Woohoo!